Joe and Hero, so good to see your faces again, even though it's just via Zoom yeah. here. I can't believe we're doing this virtually again a year later. I, I know. Think, uh, oh, nice yeah. And regardless. Yeah, yeah. So great to see you guys look fantastic. Congratulations on this film. I've seen it twice now. And I honestly think your performances are just so beautiful and stunning. So honestly, congratulations. I can't wait for US fans to see it here. Um, you know, when I first heard that you guys were going to be filming films three and four in Bulgaria, I was completely shocked. And I just want you to take me back to getting that call about what it was like. Hey, we're going to film the next two films in Bulgaria. Joe, I want to begin with you. What was that like? Um, I, I think I probably said, sorry, what? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it, well, it's odd because de definitely we shot the first two in Georgia, but it was kind of like, okay, let's do this. I mean... I feel very grateful that we were able to do it during a pandemic and, and not just work, but that we got to finish these movies and, and, and finish this story. And so I'm really glad that we got to do that. And um, Bulgaria is beautiful. It was very cold and we didn't really have a chance to explore because of COVID, but it, it's such a beautiful place. And, and Sofia is such a gorgeous city and I'd really love to go back uh, post COVID. Yeah, so different than the Georgia climate. Hero, what was your experience filming in Bulgaria and what was the news like for you that you are going to be filming the next two movies there? Yeah, um, yeah, we heard a bit in advance that I think everything was so up in the air. It was kind of like, we were like, right, COVID's here, we're going to work it out, we'll keep you posted. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was obviously like a bit of a shock and a learning curve. But as Joe said, Bulgaria is, is beautiful and has lovely people. And it was just a shame that we didn't get more, more opportunities to explore explore it further so as joe said I'd, I'd love an opportunity to go back um and kind of explore explore more of it yeah well there's so many scenes i love um in this film i love what castile did so much and i particularly love the harden and tessa ice cube scene i'm wondering how many ice cubes you had to go through while you were filming that joe i felt for you because i was like she must be getting cold right now so i want to start with you joe how many ice cubes did you guys go through <laughs> well I hate to spoil the movie magic, but I, I think just one because it was actually a glass or a plastic ice cube that we used for most of the scene. But um, the, for when we did one close-up, I think we did one take of using the actual ice. It was very cold. It was very <laughs> cold and you're, it, it's funny because you kind of, you want to squeal. And <laughs> you can't, it's not the same. Um so, yeah, I'm glad that we didn't use one ice cube and I'm glad that we didn't use more than that. Love it. Here, what were your memories on filming that scene? Were you worried about Joe getting, like, uncomfortable or too cold? Yeah. Well, there's obviously the continuity error, error with having an ice cube that's going to melt and suddenly the ice cubes change in sizes every, every time the shot changes. So, yeah, exactly. again, again, we hate to spoil the movie, movie magic, but so you get the answer, but, yeah. Um, no, it's not uh, for me. It's uh, I didn't have to endure endure the the pain of the cold. It was all Joe. So, yeah, she was a, she was a trooper for the time. We did use the real the real ice cube. But uh, love it. Yeah, I know. I love the little behind the scenes ma movie magic. Um, well, I'm I love it. something I just remembered. I what? think it was actually you who picked up the continuity issue before we did the scene. You said, "How are we going to do this? Because the ice cube's going to melt." So I think I he you know definitely what? gets the credit. Oh, well, thank you. It's te teamwork makes the dream work. But you know what? I've just realized this is another reason the intimacy coordinator helps because you actually sit down and even even things that are so just practical like that, we've sat down. When you have an in intimacy coordinator, you kind of, you do just put a bit more attention to detail into those things. And yeah, we would have had troubles if we didn't, if we didn't, if we didn't have that one toy. Yeah, yeah. I did notice that you guys did have an intimacy coordinator, this one. How was that different with those scenes? I mean, I feel like, I mean, your guys' chemistry has been so great throughout both of all three of the films now. But I'm curious, how was that different for you as a process, as an actor here? I want to begin with you. I think it's just, it's, it's important when you, especially when you're doing films that have multiple intimate scenes, it's kind of, it, it only makes sense to, to have an intimate, intimacy coordinator. It's, it's kind of like having a stunt coordinator if you have... If you have action scenes, it's, uh, it's the exact same thing. So I feel like looking back, we're just going to be like, why, why didn't we have one? Um, it makes perfect sense. So, yeah, we were happy to have them on board. Yeah, well, I love how in this book and this movie, you know, Hardin uses boxing and going to the gym in order to relieve stress and kind of get away from it all. I'm curious what's something that each of you has 
have done recently in order to relieve stress because the world has been so crazy nowadays. And, you know, for me, if it's not just like binging a Netflix show, it's probably just picking up a good book, hanging out with my dogs. Joe, what's something that you're doing recently to kind of like relieve stress and just take some time for yourself? I really like driving. I think driving is great because it's something where you you have to be a little focused, but you can also kind of you can be by yourself and you can listen to music and it's not something and it's enjoyable, but it's an activity that you still have to focus on. So yeah. uh, I just really like driving places. I like zoning out and just listening to an audiobook or like of my favorite album or something, because you're right. You're just like kind of in the zone. I love that answer. Kira, what about for you? Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people won't be shocked to say it's football for me. I feel like I kind of just, I, when You're I'm back home, I'm working, I feel like I'm doing, you know, a few auditions and bits of work here and there and just, yeah, playing for playing as much football as I can. I feel like if I, if I ever don't, I start to get a bit grumpy and I realise, oh, it's because I haven't done that. So. <laughs> I feel like that, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. I was like, I feel like I, I always see the fans talking about him playing football. Um, here, I also want to talk about your producing credit on this film. I was so excited when I saw that in the teaser originally. Um, how did that come about? You know what? It happened kind of during the process of filming, actually. Just kind of, uh, we've I had talks beforehand and realized that far down the line, um, the involvement is something that I'd love to do more of in the future. And I deliberately didn't even exercise any kind of like creative control that I wouldn't have had in previous films or just as an actor. So I didn't actually, you know, have any, any, any thing to say or add that I wouldn't have just, just as, as hero playing Harden. But moving forward, I'm super excited to kind of have that under my belt. And, um, and I'd love to do more of that behind the camera stuff in the future too. So. Yeah, and Sorry. Joe said it was your idea with the ice cube. So there you are producing yeah. right there. <laughs> oh, Yes. Um, Joe, you are incredible at accents. I think you do the best American accent ever. And I love it when you play Tessa impersonating Harden, when she's saying Elizabeth Bennett needs to chill and here impersonating his name. I think you do such a fantastic job. So is it easier to kind of drop your Australian accent and pick up on an English accent now that you've been working with Hero for so long after these years? No. I haven't done a British accent in so long. I, th I think it's the first accent I ever did or tried to do. And I found it really easy because I think it's more similar coming from Australian to, to British. It's kind of just like a posh, you know. Uh, but now I've been doing a US accent for so long that I feel like I would ne I would struggle to get into the uh, one. Yeah. I mean, Hero, you have done an American accent too, yep. and the silencing. What was that experience like? Because your American accent was so fantastic. What was it like doing? Wasn't that uh, your first American accent? It was, it was. I do one in, in First Love as well, which is which is coming out soon. That, that I'm, yeah, I'm that so I'm, excited. Yeah, I, I, I talked I'm to Sydney for that movie, yeah. No, thank you. But to answer your question, uh, nerve, 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 like, it's one of those things where like you can think you're doing it, but it's kind of like, so when you see yourself on camera and you, it's kind of that thing of like you kind of need someone else to say whether whether it's whether it's good or not uh so yeah I'm, I'm i'm definitely like nervous about it but excited too and like i'm always kind of question questioning it but it's something that i feel like you can never kind of do much to do enough practice on so yeah one day i'll get to joe's level but but um be, Aww, be that's so sweet uh, <laughs> well, I will get killed by the fans if I don't ask this question, but I, they, everybody wants to know what your Halloween costumes were when you were filming in Bulgaria for that Halloween party. Can you actually confirm what they were and if they were related? And Joe, what did the post-it note say? Hero, what was your costume? I was going to say Joe can go first because hers might need a bit more explanation. I'll go first, but I'll, I'll, I won't use that too much time. I did a Peaky Blinders look. We were lucky to use the costume, uh, the co huge costume like wardrobe um, facilities in the studio in Bulgaria. So we had everything to pick from and I chose like a simple Peaky Blinders look, but I loved it. Love but I loved it. Hers was a lot more interesting. Joe? Um, I completely forgot about that post-it note. How I don't... No, how did they know there was a post-it note? I think it was on. Honestly, I I saw the picture a while ago. I think that they just saw it and it was like blurry on the on the pig costume there. <laughs> um, well, it it was a pig costume and I loved it because it was very warm. But then when I wanted to take it off, I just unzipped the back and then I was in normal clothes. So I very very my choice, um, and only took me like 
I think we were having a competition of the shortest amount of time to pick the costume outfit in the costume house. And I think I got mine in like two minutes. Yeah. I just walked and I walked in and I said, I just want the silliest thing. The post-it note said capitalism or I think it had the name of a former uh, leader of a, of a country. And uh, it was kind of, yeah, I, I got rid of the post-it note after a little bit, but it was just trying to make it more clever. You guys are so... Don't want to say anything political. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, you answered the question for the fans. Hero and Joy, I appreciate it so much. I can't wait for fans to see it after we fell. I know so many international fans have seen it already. Thank you both so much for your time today. It's always so much fun to talk with you both. No, I'm talking to you again, Lauren. Take care. You too, Hero. Bye. Goodbye. Well, Castile, so nice to see you and chat with you again. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you too. Yes, congratulations on this film. I've seen it twice now, and honestly... Like, thank you so much for everything that you did and been bringing Bokessa <laughs> to life in this hour and a half. I know you did, you put every, like um, all of my favorite Hessa scenes into the film, which I absolutely loved. So congratulations on it. I can't wait for US fans to see it. I absolutely love the gym scene, but it had to have been so tricky for you to film because of all the mirrors, but it yeah. looks so beautiful. The cinematography was so beautiful. Can you just talk about what the memories were of shooting that scene and did it take a full day to shoot? Yeah, it shot, it took um, half a day to shoot because it was definitely quite tricky. And I, I, somewhere there's got to be behind the scenes pictures of, um, the, the camera operator had to wear a whole black suit, um, like his whole head was covered in everything so that you couldn't see him in those mirrors. And we did have mirrors that we could move because we made that set. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's one of my most proud sets as well, or scenes as well. I love that scene. I think they did such a beautiful job. And you know, what's really interesting is like with those intimate scenes, Everybody was like, oh, these are going to be really tough. Like we better, we better schedule a whole day for it. And as we kept going, like Hero and Joe are just such professionals that they, it took us less and less time to do them. Um, so it was really great because we were able to actually like let the jacuzzi and the gym scene be kind of like difficult scenes to film because the two of them are so easy and do it, you know, so easily. Yeah, no, two of the best scenes in the movie, their chemistry is just like so beautiful to watch. And like yeah. I said, I really like the, my, the cinematography of this one is is truly my favorite in any of the films. Um, mm -hmm. I'm honestly curious which photos you chose from like the original after in this film. How did you figure out which photos of Harden and Tessa? Because we have the one where they're in the field. We have a couple of scenes from the aquarium. How did you figure out which ones of them to pick for this film? Um, they, they didn't give me any, many options. They, okay. <laughs> um, they didn't have a huge bank stored up. So we kind of used what we had. Um, it, that was actually a pretty big challenge. Like, do we have enough pictures? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, what you, you used what you had and like, they, they were real. I feel like they really spoke to what the characters would have actually had of, of themselves in their apartment. Um, yeah. I'm honestly, you know, you've worked with Hero and Joe now over a several months time frame. you know, prepping before you even came to, Bul before you guys even went to Bulgaria. What's something that the two of them taught you about yourself as a director after working with them over that amount of time? Um, you know, it's really, <laughs> they're so different from each other. Um, that I think the best thing I was able to learn was like how to quickly switch between, um, these very different people. Um, in my previous films, they those are usually like, here's your lead actor. And that's the person that is like the most important, mm -hmm. um, in terms of like, you talk to them the most, you coach them the most, or there's like one younger person that you're having to work with a lot more. And like, there's a bunch of established actors that you don't need to give many notes to. Here, it was very much like, we're gonna go talk to Joe, we're gonna go talk to Hero. Like both of them had to have equal, you know, kind of 50-50 um, partnership. And, you know, talking to each of them was quite different because they relate to, um, to things just, I mean, she's very analytical with things. And he is more of, I would say like, I think he's, he's the more emotional of the two for sure. I think that might surprise people, but like 
he, he has, he operates from his gut um, and she is operating from her brain. I love, no, I love those answers. Um, last question for you really quick. I know there was a couple, like there was a little scene in the teaser that fully didn't make it into the film. And I'm sure that it was heartbreaking to cut scenes that you took time to shoot. Are we going to see any extended or deleted scenes when the Blu-ray comes out? I hope so. You know, they don't let me know any, basically they're like, go film what you want to film. You have complete freedom to film whatever. Like they were really great about that. But then in terms of like the marketing and the release, like I don't get to be involved in any of it. I mean, I'd love to be, I think it'd be really fun. Um, but as of now, you know, until I get more power, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it'll turn out, but I, I do really, really hope. I mean, there's still a lot of things in flux, um, but I'm hoping very much that all of those scenes get um, out to people in one way or another. I mean, we have ideas, so it's not that we're not thinking about it. We're just thinking, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into that. You know that I had to ask, otherwise the fans will yes. get on Twitter for not asking. So yeah. I, <laughs> I appreciate your time so much. I, mean, I would love to see the Castile Landon cut any day. I can't wait to see After Ever Happy and to see what you're working on on, on the Untitled After prequel as well. I can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Thank you. Thank you so much.